This is uh, Tanya. Tanya, go ahead. Tracy, go ahead. Oh, hold on, I'm sorry. Um, well, I'm actually quite, quite honored. Um, and I think if um, there's any girl out there who uh, has any claim of, of doing what we're doing and uh, looks to our mission, and particularly Barb and I, I feel quite honored about that. And I, I hope that uh, when the young ladies, um, not just for Barb and I, but all the ladies in our corps, watch what uh, we're able to do, that it uh, definitely gives them a sense of what they can accomplish and uh, that they'll uh, pursue their own dreams. And if not to go into space, to, to at least pursue the things that they enjoy the most and not to be um, at all uh, inhibited or uh, fearful that they may not achieve them. Because certainly uh, any of us, whether we're male or female, uh, face challenges, especially on the road to becoming an astronaut. And it was simply our desire to do this that helped us to overcome those things. And we all have that desire. I mean, we, we, some of us are better at math than others. Some of us are better at building things and drawing things. But the one thing we all have in common is that will to do uh, what we are interested in the most. And if you hang on to that, and there's, there's nothing out there that you can't achieve. Nice. Okay. I got uh, David here, right in the center of the room. David? Uh, did any of you go to the Air Force Academy? I guess I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you would. Yes, I uh, was in the Air Force Academy class in 1984. And, uh, I could actually expand on that. I also went to the Air Force Academy as an exchange student coming from the Naval Academy. And i got to say the Naval Academy is a better school. <laughs> Or separate them. Right. All right, I have Matt right here. Matt, go ahead. How do you know about the research scientists? What is your preparation for your undergraduate education, master's, PhD? What is, uh, what is your research in that group that's in Los Angeles? You know, I would say that maybe I took a different route than most um, traditional research scientists, and that I spent, though I'm a chemist by background and by training, I spent as much time with the wrench and my hand fixing the fusion pumps and, and putting together manifolds uh, to carry um, gases and stuff like that. So the time I spent with the beaker and chemicals was uh, as, uh, as, as uh, often as, uh, um, well, not as often as, as with uh, tools in my hand. How it prepared me, all that training, to, to do what I'm doing now is to uh, simply have a problem in front of me and figure out a solution, how to fix it. That's when you uh, go beyond college and into graduate school to get a higher education degree, uh, your job mainly is to learn how to solve problems and to not be halted by something if it goes wrong. And I think you've seen with not just our mission, but all shuttle missions, we plan them out so well, and um, that's because we have a lot to do in a short period of time, and we have a lot of people working on them, and we have to be choreographed and coordinated. But things don't always go as planned, and anybody who's had a family vacation probably knows that as well. And so what do you do when something goes wrong, and when something goes wrong times, you know, however many people you have to work the problem, you can't be halted by that. And I think my training as a research scientist uh, taught me how to just figure it out and not, uh, not be positive about that. All right, I have Caitlin here. She's here in the center. She's dad holding her up right now. She wants to know what it's like, how long does it take you to adapt, basically, in the uh, in the space station or wherever the shuttle? How long does it take you to adapt? Or, you know, you I think it's different for every single person. In my particular case, um, I kept, I made sure that I kept the ceiling on the ceiling and the floor on the floor for the first day um, so that I, I wouldn't get sick. And I was really surprised because I knew that was the ceiling and I knew that was the floor, but my body still felt like I was upside down. And that lasted about a day. By the next day, that, that started going away. And then that's when the real fun part comes because it doesn't matter um, what the ceiling or floor is. Basically, wherever your head is, that's where the ceiling is. So you could be you could be uh, floating in this direction, and that would be the ceiling, and that would be the floor, and it would be perfectly natural. 
it gets different for every person. Some people, Tracy, as we say, was like a duck in water. She took to it immediately and, and uh, uh, was able to adapt immediately. Some people take up to three days. All right, I got Mark right here. He's, uh, he's down here on the floor, but I'm going to ask this question for him. Mark wants to know if you've seen any type of unidentified flying objects or the <laughs> asteroids coming close to the, to the shuttle. No one wants to answer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank all of you. Enjoy the rest of your day here at Epcot. The only reason for true. Have a round of